Hey, good morning. Welcome back. We're looking at the book 1 Samuel. We're in chapter 2, and today verses 12 through 17. Now the sons of Eli were corrupt. They did not know the Lord. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered a sacrifice, the priest's servant would come with a three-pronged flesh hook in his hand while the meat was boiling. Then he would thrust it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot, and the priest would take for himself all that the flesh hook brought up. So they did in Shiloh to all the Israelites who came there. Also, before they burned the fat, the priest's servant would come and say to the man who sacrificed, Give meat for roasting to the priest, for he will not take boiled meat from you but raw. And if the man said to him, They should really burn the fat first, then you shall take as much as your heart desires, he would then answer him, No, but you must give it now, and if not, I will take it by force. Therefore the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for men abhorred the offering of the Lord. So you could find the instructions for the fat and the sacrifices and all that back in Leviticus, try Leviticus chapter 3. What we're going to be doing here is contrasting faithful priest, like Samuel's going to become, with the sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas. These guys are bad guys. This morning we're just going to look at what the bad guys are doing and what the result of that was. Tomorrow we'll look at Samuel. So the first thing we find in our passage here is that God has, of course, a priesthood, and here we see that the sons of Eli were corrupt. And the Bible just says it outright. It doesn't try to hide it. doesn't try to paste over it or smooth over it. It's not mortared over. They did not know the Lord. So here are priests, and there's a lesson for us here, right? Just because somebody's a pastor or a priest or a famous speaker does not mean that, that person knows the Lord. Just because he speaks eloquently and he's dynamic and he's got the, the best, most colorful, perfect slides he can put on the screen. Doesn't mean he knows anything spiritual. Here we find out that the priests just, they had helpers, they had kind of enforcer guys like this guy who would come and tell them, look, you've got to give it the way we're, we're taking it. And if somebody said, well, that's not what the scripture said, they would just say, well, we're going to take it from you by force. It's just a totally awful picture. And yeah, what do you have here? Verse 17 is kind of the, the final analysis of this, right? Therefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for men abhorred the offering of the Lord. If you look at the margin, abhorred says despised. This shows you there's giant problems, and yet, and yet, God instructed his people to follow through with the system he had set up. So we have a situation in Israel, and again, these early chapters are kind of setting us, setting the story up, showing us the history so that when, when different things begin to happen now, we're going to see why. So now Eli, the Hophni and Phinehas' father, the, the top priest, he meant well, but we'll, we'll see how that worked out, how his discipline situation worked out with his kids. The important thing for us to realize here is what? God still calls us to worship him, even if everything else around us has been totally corrupted. Also, we see that the priesthood can be corrupted. You can have pastors and ministers and people who serve him, but they do not even know him. And the great sin issue here is that if the priesthood is corrupt, then people will feel the worship is corrupt and it'll be a disincentive to following God in the way that he's marked out. So we don't want any of that. We want to be absolutely not to put any kind of stumbling block in anybody's path. Things should be the best. Things should be the most attractive. It takes a lot of people to make a worship, a congregation, be a beautiful worship setting. So whatever church you're in, whatever local church you're part of, I hope you will do your utmost so that there will not be any people who would feel that they abhor the offering of the Lord because I just don't even want to go there because uh, things are so, so far down from what they could be. Let's, let's bring things up higher. And on that note, let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, help our local churches, our local congregations, help them to be places where people are drawn close to you, close to your heart. We pray that there will be a minimum of distractions that People will be led to the cross, Lord, led by the word to, into your present truth, the things that are needful for these last uh, closing hours of this phase of earth's history. Help us in this, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, kind of a grim one. We have corrupt priesthood, so let's each do our part and help things come up to a higher plane, and God will be with us as we do it. You have a wonderful day serving him.